Okay, so this video dealt with a question about um, should I clear a fraction out when I have a um, absolute value? I'm here to tell you for this particular video, there's a reason why you don't. So this is linked to another video where what you would take and why I'm multiplying by 10, just to run back to this, is I'm, I'm looking at what is the least common divider of uh, 2 and 5. So what number can both 2 and 5 divide? Well, that number is 10. 10 divided by 2 is an even num is a whole, an integer, and 10 divided by 5 is also an integer. So here's the reason why I don't want to do this for this particular problem. It has to do with the fact that it's not actually going to make less work for me, and it's not actually, in the end, going to clear any fractions out. So what has to happen here is that when I do this, so let me show you, that and that becomes 5, this and this becomes 2. And what I'm end up le left with here is this absolute value of 1 minus 3x times 5. Now the problem with this is that you can't use the distributive property for this 5 into absolute value problems. That's where, wherein the problem now lies. So the other side, sure, becomes 8, and that's nice. And right now when you look at it, Sure, it looks great, there's no fractions, but the problem is, again, is that absolute values do not allow or adhere to the distributive property. So, because of that particular problem, the thing with this is, is that I now have to get rid of this 5. Well, how do I get rid of this 5? Well, the only way to get rid of this 5, if it's multiplication on this side, I need to turn it into division on this side. So, if I'm multiplying it over here, I can make it division over here. Well, when I do that, notice that it brings the fraction right back into play. So because it brings the fraction right back into play, the, the one caveat to really clearing fractions, it has to do with absolute value problems, um, and you really don't want to do that. There's actually a, a quicker way to do so, and I'm just going to quickly show you how is it quicker that I just get to this 8 fifths. Um, and what I want to do here is actually just go ahead and I just want to right away, okay, take this problem and utilize what I was talking about before. So what I was talking about before was if, it's, if one side of the equation has this operation, its inverse operation is simply placed on the other side. So notice what I have here is I've got division. I've got this division by 2. So in, instead of writing division by 2 over here, I can write it as multiplication by 2 on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this as multiplication of 2, and then I'm going to cross that out because it's no longer there. And what I'm now left with is 1 minus 3x, the absolute value, is equal to, well, in this case, I'm going to multiply them. And what you have here is this 8 over 5, which I achieved before, and actually a little, a lot less work what I would consider. And the reason I do it this way simply has to do with the absolute value inequality, or the absolute value. Um, problem. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you very quickly what you would do once you have this step because this is different as well. What we need to remember is absolute value, okay, is a distance from zero. So what you need to really think about is that this is the thing, okay, that is a distance from zero um, and this tells you how far away from zero this is. So if this is zero, the problem is, is distance does not include direction. So what we have to do is actually just find both. So if I was over here, this is 1 minus 3x. So that's if I had traveled left. Well, I could have traveled right. So 1 minus 3x is also over here. Um, and this is telling you the distance that it actually traveled. So if I go this way, uh, 8 fifths, then I am at negative 8 fifths. If I am this way 8 fifths, then I'm to the right, which is positive 8 fifths. And what I now have is I'm trying to find out what is the number that I can plug in that will give me a value of negative 8 fifths because that tells me that I am a distance of 8 fifths from zero. So, if, and then over here, I want to know what's the number I can plug in for x that will create the positive 8 fifths. And what you have to do is you actually have to solve both problems. So if I want this expression to give me this, then mathematically we just say I want it to give me that by making an equal sign. So I write 1 minus 3x equals this negative 8 fifths. And then I have the other problem, which is 1 minus 3x equals 8 
fifths. So now, if you want to, now we can go ahead and we could solve this. If you wanted to clear the fractions at this point, you could go ahead and multiply everything by 5, and you'll get the 5 minus 15x equals negative 8. Then you can go ahead and solve this. So now we can go back to clearing that fraction idea, and then up here I can do the same thing, and I get 5 minus 15x equals positive 8. Um, and, and there we go, there we have to clear the fractions, and now we're just solving this without fractions anymore. Um, but point being is that if I have an absolute value function, I, I really don't want to actually utilize clearing the fraction because of that issue that I had before. Um, you really just are going to have to deal with the fraction when it deals with that one. So it's actually much quicker to multiply it by 2 and get it to the point where you're making your two equations. And then we can go ahead and apply the clearing the fraction part if we want to. Um, but we don't want to apply clearing the fraction until we get past this point. So that's when we would go ahead and use it. So I hope that helps with uh, your understanding of what it is that you wanted. Um, but then I can go ahead and solve this problem, and I get negative 15x, so minus 5 from both sides, which is uh, negative 8 minus 5, which is negative 13, and then I would go ahead and divide those, um, those numbers. So I would divide negative 13 by negative 15, and I, I personally would just leave it as x equals 13 over 15. This one I would minus 5 from both sides, so I get negative uh, 15x equals uh, 3, Divide this out, and I get x equals negative one-fifth for this one. Uh, please note um, x equals uh, 13 over 15. Please note that your x's don't have to be opposites of each other. I know some people, when they first learn this, they get a little confused because they just think that the x's are just going to be opposite of each other because you learn it. You just have to remember you actually have to set up the equations and solve them. They are not just going to be opposite numbers. They will sometimes be totally different values. And if one's positive, the other one can be positive as well. They don't have to be one positive, one negative. So do just make sure that you uh, do go ahead and, and solve them through. So I hope that helps with this idea of the absolute value with a problem in it. Um, the one last thing I want to talk about is what happens if I did one small thing to change this? And I got 1 minus 3x over 2 equals this 4 fifths. Um, because I want you to understand these are two totally now different problems. Um, once I have an absolute value covering an entire expression, then this expression is the thing that I would use to map from 0. Um, so this whole expression would be uh, negative 4 fifths. So I could take this 1 minus 3x over 2 would be at negative 4 fifths. And this whole expression inside, 1 minus 3x over 2, would then be at positive 4 fifths. And now I have two equations. So I would have 1 minus 3x over 2 equals this negative 4 fifths. So this becomes two totally different problems. And I'm not going to write this one here. But now I'm going to show you that now, in this case, this is now able to use that multiply both sides by 10. <coughs> um, but the point of it is, is once I get the absolute value out of the problem, that's when you can use clearing the fraction. The only way you get absolute value out of the problem is by applying the actual meaning of absolute value, which is a distance to the left of 0 and a distance to the right of 0. Um, so we first have to isolate it to the point where it's just an absolute value problem here and saying it's equal to a value. And then we can make our two equations to then apply this clearing the uh, fraction. Notice down here, if it actually had this all inside and not just the numerator inside the absolute value, then I would take everything in here and make my two new problems and then go ahead and apply this property. Um, so. I hope that helps with, a, with an understanding of the idea of absolute value, but because it's absolute value, it does change the game a little bit.